My name is Alaska. My name is Sims, Stephen Sims. Pleasure to be here. Hi, it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Alaska. Big fan. I'm a big fan of yours. Yeah, yeah wow, well, God, that's that's too bad. I'm providing the glamorous, wow, celebrity perspective, and you're providing the like everyday human being. Yeah, real blue collar on this side. Blue, blue collar. and you actually have a blue collar. <laughs> exactly. On. So wait, are you straight? I am. Well, that's a game changer. Are you single? I'm not, I'm engaged to get married. I'm gonna marry a woman. It doesn't matter who you marry. Yeah. Hashtag after show. After show. For Orange is the New Black season three. I like O-I-T-N-B. <laughs> I couldn't think of all the initials. It's really like lighthearted and it's like a really fun prison experience. It makes me wanna be in that prison for sure. Oh, of course um, you want to go in that prison because you're I a do. fucking straight man. I love so many of those chicks. Yeah. Top five hottest chicks that I'd want to hook up with. Mm -hmm. um, Alex was... Voss, let me guess. No, Alex no, Voss. no, no. Morello. Morello's my number one. The Jersey girl who uh, oh, is in love with Christopher. Uh, the one who always wears lipstick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, so, so, for sure. Is so, that the little the Asian The little woman? Asian girl. I, I don't know why. Oh, just, yeah, not yeah. the other. I'm thinking no, no, of you're Chang. Th you're thinking of Chang. I was like, <laughs> you have a type. Sophia. I love Sophia. I love curves. I love dark-skinned women. She Laverne Cox's Laverne character. Laverne Cox, beautiful. Number four. I would probably say Piper, even though she's not my type. It's just there's something about that that blonde, annoying, innocent girl. She's really pretty and she's really symmetrical. She's very symmetrical. The one girl that works in the kitchen, uh, I can't remember her name. She's friends with the girl that has the fake eye drop. I know exactly yes, who you're talking about. Tiny one. She's yeah. really pretty. Yes, yeah. so that's it. Those are my five. In no order, maybe. Episode of one of Orange is the New Black season three is... Mother's Day. <laughs> Mother's Day. I almost said Father's Day. I really, really, really enjoyed this episode. And I feel like it not only, I'm gonna get real, real serious here. It not only defines the show, but it defines the show's creator, Genji Cohen, who did Weeds. Yes. I feel like, you know, she writes the most incredible dialogue for women. And oh, this, she's a woman? Yeah, oh my gosh, yeah. And she's so great too. I thought Genji Cohen was the man. No, she's a woman. Her, uh, her brother did um, Will and Grace. Yeah, there we go. Uh, You're get getting very <laughs> sleepy. You're getting very sleepy. All the kids come to the to the prison. They do, they do, and it's um because Caputo, uh, he's in charge now. He's the warden. He's trying to make it more of a like a family oriented place. Right. Um, they had mini golf with a fan that they attached like cardboard to to be a windmill. And it was impossible <laughs> because Piper made it. She made it hooked up to a fan, and so it was just like. Yeah. Obviously didn't work. Would you find it difficult, like, not to be seduced by these women? I don't know if it's seduction is more of it's like you, you're the pow the control you have, like the power, like, uh -huh. like I'm in charge. That would be hard. I think it would be. Uh, it I would wouldn't be. like yelling at ladies mm -hmm. all day. I also don't want to tuck in my shirt all day. I love when um, Pensatucky has to bury her um, <laughs> abortion babies. <laughs> and she has like a little <laughs> memorial about so all of her like. <laughs> she has names for all of them. I think they all have like the same letter name. It's so <laughs> sweet. They're like the Kardashians. <laughs> <laughs> they are. If we had to rename the episode, it would be Orange is the New Mother's Day. I was gonna say, Orange is the New Motherfucker. Motherfucker! Makes sense, I love makes sense. That. Fucking red fills in the hole. Oh, well, she does, yeah, she fills in the hole. She's cool, man. And she was on um, Star Trek Enterprise. Oh, yeah, she was. Episode two. Bed bugs and beyond. They get the bed bugs, they realize a couple of the girls have bed bugs, so they have to start burning the mattresses, and then they don't have enough of those um, temporary uniforms. So like some of them are wearing garbage bags. I think Voss is wearing a garbage bag the whole episode. Which is the look I really enjoy. And I'm glad that we're getting some garbage bag fashions mm -hmm. on, on Netflix television. They start burning the books, and then we find out that they're actually 
there's really no point in saving any of the beds of the books because they're gonna close the prison. What do we do? Uh, this show is so crazy because it really these, is. these people just run amok. I never saw Hogan's Heroes, but I think it's like Hogan's Heroes because that takes place in a Nazi concentration camp. But it's like funny and goofy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is like, they have so much fucking freedom. They have cell phones. Like, how are you <laughs> have, having all the time to do all and these things? And they find a lot of time to like hook up and stuff. Like that's, I envy that. Oh, and it's when Nikki and uh, Boo, they look for their heroin. And they lose the heroin. Oh, they lost their heroin. Was she still doing heroin at this point? I thought she, she quit. I thought she did too, but I think she was jonesing for it. Like, she really wanted that heroin. We're all jonesing yeah. for it. Pipes and Alex have, like, really angry sex. Yeah, that's right, because Alex tells her that she ratted her out. She told the parole officer about her. So shady. And then they're like, they do, they do. Yeah, they get it on. I bet you like that scene. I'm really <laughs> in it for the characters. <laughs> right! <laughs> so you don't care about hot chicks getting it on? That's only one out of my five. I mean, Voss is pretty hot. Those glasses. Some things never go out of style. <laughs> you know what else happened in this episode, which is kind of crazy? You know, so they're focusing on Bennett, John Bennett, the guard, and he goes to visit Daya's family, who is that guy, uh, Carlos. Who... Oh, and it's awful, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> He has like kids everywhere, and then he pulls the gun on the little boy for not eating the French fries. It's it's insane. Orange is the new eat vegetables and not just French fries for dinner. I'm gonna say orange is the new scabies because scabies and bed bugs are pretty similar. Episode three. This should be called the Genji Cohen is uh, cleaning house and firing a bunch of actors episode <laughs> because Bennett disappears at the end of the last episode, and this episode, fucking Nikki, fucking Natasha Leone gets sent up the fucking river. This is the recasting, like reboot, no. relaunch, rebrand re like episode. When, when Susan Summers left Three's Company, it's... Oh, that's shade. Yeah. That's not happens. cool. Let's get another blonde in here. We get to go back in time, and we get to see Nikki, and she came to prison because she needed some heroines and she stole a, um, a taxi. You know what else happens in this episode? Uh, Healy invites Red to come to help talk to his, his Russian wife. Yeah, this is the beginning of the kindling of the romance between Red and, and Healy. How do you like Healy? I think that actor's great. <sighs> He's so... Yes, the actor's fine, but, but the, the character, the, the guy is uh, the worst type of ass. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> he's, he's so horrible. But also he's in this like, episode, this is when they bring in the new counselor. What's her name? Like Kitten or oh, her name is, Jujube um, or something like it's, that? It's Jujube. Bubbles. Rogers. Rogers. She starts a theater class. I didn't know the counselor's name was Rogers. I thought it was like something cute. I thought it was too. I thought it was Bubbles. Bubbles or Kitten or Kitty Cat. Kitty Cat. My favorite scene from episode three is it was Healy and Red. He has a mail order Russian bride who's a big pain in the ass. He tries to communicate with her. He tries to be a good man. Uh, and Red like loses it and just really defends him. And I just thought it was real cool. How about the Russian mail order wife? Like. You get to America, you're married to this guy, and then he turns out to be like a psycho dick with a fucking anger problem. I feel empathy for the Russian wife. I think empathy is a boner. boner. If we rename the episode, it would be Orange is the New Empathy is the Boner. Or Orange is the New Boner. Episode four. Finger in the Dyke. This was a good episode. This episode featured uh, Big Boo, and this was like her backstory oh. and uh, the story with her parents. And I thought it was really good because it started out with like her as a little girl wanting just to wear, you know, like like regular street clothes to her school picture, and her mom wanting to wear a dress and like that whole fucking bullshit that parents do to their kids. So when you have kids, you're gonna let them wear whatever they want. Absolutely. To their first communion. Absolutely. <laughs> to their to their. Bar mitzvah, yes. Wait, are you Jewish? No, I'm not, but my, my wife-to-be is. This is when we find out Pencil Tucky is still getting money from like those West Baptist Borough cocksucker churches, you know, like they, they don't give a shit um, about anyone. And this is when Boo decides to become like this reformed lesbian and she meets with the guy 
And um, and he call he reads her for Phil. He does. He saw the the tattoo says Butch on the arm. Because she loses it. <laughs> Boo tries to pretend that she's a lipstick. Can they give, they give her the makeover? <laughs> yeah, they put her in a wig. <laughs> Sophia <laughs> puts her in a full wig. The whole time this is going on, Caputo is giving a tour to a a corporation that's going to buy the prison. They buy prisons and they run them. So he's giving this tour, and you got straight boo running around, like asking them questions, and like, it was fun to see this, the prison could be gone. It's actually really not that great of an episode either, now that I think about it. This, this is kind of a lull. Next! Well, I love a good makeover scene. And especially making over like the butchest of the butch dykes of them all. Big boo, making her into like a, like, churchy, like, straighty. My favorite scene was in the boo flashback. Well, when her and her girlfriend are having sex with the giant black strap on, because it's it's so good, like it's so real. You see her get up, you see her get off it, you see Boo wearing the belt, like it's so fucking great. Is Big Boo on your list of hot ladies? I mean, they're all on my list. Big Boo like, after the makeover though, <laughs> no, passing, before, no, passable. The makeover. With the strap on. Oh yes, me too. Yeah, yeah no, okay. right. we're on the same page. Yeah, we get to see some serious tits, some serious ass in this show. Orange is the new. Black strap on. Black strap on, that's good. <laughs> You're good at this. Hey, I know what's happening. Episode six. Episode five. Episode five. Fake it till you fake it some more. Ain't that the truth. This is the, the Flocka episode. Flocka, who would definitely be number six on my list if I was able to go past five. And there's this special job that's coming down the line that we find out about. I think we find out in the episode what the job is, which is um, whispers. <laughs> Whispers, they're making panties for a panty line. They kind of look like granny panties, but maybe they have different cuts, I don't know. You think the pink thongs and shit look like granny panties? Oh, maybe I got the wrong. What kind of fucked up granny do you have? <laughs> if I lock myself into this, you have to help me get out, but I think I can get out. Ah! Whispers is a female underwear company that the girls get to work for. And then we realized that like they have to take this aptitude test. Oh, that's right. Which didn't mean shit because they just picked like 20 people out of a hat. They're like in the cafeteria and everyone's to be quiet. And Piper's very Piper and she's like taking the test all studious and everyone else is goofing off and Alex doesn't give a shit. Flocka Flocka's storm. having Flocka trouble with yeah. the test and then she ends up getting the job. Yeah. So, and then it comes to light later on that the test is totally fake. Yeah. Flocka, like a lot of the other girls, just gets in jail for a stupid, stupid crime. The kid killed himself, but I mean, still, she just was printing pieces of paper with like a cherry on them. Can you really go to jail for selling fake drugs? Orange is the new fake LSD kills. Fake LSD kills. LSD doesn't kill. Don't do fake LSD kids. Oh yeah, Red is doing what everyone, every chick does. She's playing Healy like a fiddle. She's trying to get back into the kitchen. Piper tells her to tone it down a little bit, gives her some new makeup, takes oh. the pointy out of her hair. Red is like, do I look terrifying? <laughs> <laughs> do I look and Piper's <laughs> like, yeah. But I mean, Red does look pretty Which so far, well. that's our second makeover of the season, technically. I love makeover episodes, and I, so I makeover moments. So yes, my favorite moment is the uh, Red getting some, some fashion advice from Pipes. That's my favorite scene too, not because of the makeover, but because it's a really good moment between Piper and Red. Episode, episode six. six. A lot of people told me they hated this episode, because like, we don't care about Chang's backstory. And I was like, why do you, you not care about Chang's backstory? Why do you gotta hate? Yeah. Just because Chang is a side hoe on this series. The great thing about this show is that everybody eventually gets their own feature episode. There's not much to it other than we find out that she just becomes like this, this person in this Chinese like crime racket. I think it's fun to see Chang's like day in the life. Like, she has these oranges like hidden outside of the fence somehow. She gets orange to, oranges delivered to her yeah. through a hole in the fence. Yeah. Again, not using it to escape, just using it to get things. You gotta get those oranges. Fence. Chang's pretty fucking boss. She's, yeah. She's like, she's got it. She's got prison pretty much life hacked. Piper is working for Whispers sewing the panties. Whisper. And uh, she meets, um, I don't know what the new, what's that new girl's name? Uh, Justin Bieber. Yeah, Justin Bieber with all the tattoos from Australia. 
very attractive. Very nice haircut. You Is see. she on your list of, of you want to do it with hers? Uh, probably seven. Probably seven. Okay. I mean, she's new seven. to the season, so I wasn't thinking. Again, I was. I should have prepared a list. I should have did like a whole bracket. Still standing firm by that Morello, who actually has a big part in this episode too, but mm -hmm. she starts meeting with guys that she's writing to outside, yeah. and she obviously is so full of shit. She has all these crazy backstories of that aren't true and all this stuff. Have you ever met a woman in prison? No, I haven't. Not you, that I know you haven't of. carried on a, a pen pal relationship with no. any prison women? I, I have not. This was also the episode uh, when Healy gets Red back in the kitchen. Gloria doesn't give a shit. She says, Red, you could take it. And then we immediately find out that the new kitchen food are these giant oh. uh, plastic bags of just crap. Like it says mac and cheese and it's just like yellow. Yeah, it's so, so gross. But this is also when we find out that there's also, there's a kosher meal option. One of the prison inmates asks for a kosher meal. Um, she says she's Jewish, but we really know it's because she wants something that doesn't taste as bad. And they, they go to the freezer and they pull out these kosher meals and that's the beginning of a beginning of a whole other storyline. If you're in prison, it's the better choice of food. Yeah. Yeah. Crunchy vegetables. Crunchy vegetables. Orange, Orange is, is the, the new, new crunchy, crunchy vegetables. vegetables. Kosher, Kosher vegetables. vegetables. Episode seven, tongue tied. This is the Norma episode. So, so much yeah. happens in this episode. This is clearly the middle point of the season because they're like, all right, now we're gonna actually start having things happen. Yeah. This is when Piper gets the idea to start selling dirty panties. This is the episode where um, her new girl, Stella, agrees to contribute to the whispers to help uh, Piper take the leftover material and sew panties together and uh, wear them. This season's really interesting because up until this season, Piper's been sort of like the normal like person who's in this crazy world. But in this season, Piper totally just like becomes a fucking crazy person. And she becomes really into being a criminal and being bad. This is her life. And you can tell that too whenever she like meets her parents for her birthday or like in this episode when she meets her brother to talk about getting him to help with the panty business. like. She's not thinking of anything else. And I, I think that also helps too that we don't see Larry at all, her uh, her ex-fiance, which I'm yeah. fine with. That always kind of took me out of it. I really like being in the prison universe. He fucked a pie. Who has that? <laughs> Also important this episode, Norma. The Church of Norma begins. Norma's backstory is interesting. It was crazy, yes, it's like, it cuts to her like wedding day and she's like a beautiful hippie bride getting married to this guy. And she says, you know, he says I do and then they're married. And then like it moves on to the next girl mm -hmm. and she comes up and she says I do. And there's like seven of them in a row. So this guy has a bunch of a bunch of wives. So we've figured out her name is Ramos. Is it Ramos? Ramos, Ramos. Like Rebecca Romanos. Rebecca uh, Romano Stamos. She slices her finger off, Red's in charge of the kitchen. This is whenever the bullshit food comes and uh, the, the corporation is really taken over. And more of the inmates now are asking for kosher meals. Yeah, it's like Judaism fever. It is. Overtakes the whole it's, prison. It's hot for Jews. I love Jewish guys. There well, you know, a while where I was only dating Jewish guys. Oh, really? Were you on J date? It wasn't that I was seeking them out, but it just happened that like every guy I ended up dating was Jewish for a while. I think I'm just attracted to the people of God, the children of Zion. Yeah. Orange is the new children of Zion. <laughs> All right, this is episode eight. Fear and other smells. This is the Alex backstory after Alex's mom's funeral. After her and Piper see each other, because she and then she runs off to Paris. It's like in between Piper and going to jail for the first time. And Alex does drugs at a party, then misses the pickup for their fellow drug dealer, and then the, their drug master gets mad and ends up shooting him. a guy right in front of Alex. Moral of the story is, once again, don't do fake drugs. Or go to Paris. Don't ever, ever. go to Paris and do fake drugs. Suzanne, Crazy Eyes, is writing a story. She becomes a writer. They don't really call her Crazy Eyes anymore. Yeah. She's just straight Suzanne, and she she's writing a, an exotic sci-fi novel with a, a character named Commander Rodcocker or something? Uh, yeah, Rodcocker. <laughs> Rodcocker. <laughs> Admiral Rodcocker, that's what I it is. I wanna read this damn Yeah, I know, it seems so Ari. good. Also, Pencil Tucky, um, Tiffany, who is now driving the van, she's with one of the new COs, 
who uh, looks like a young Jack Jack Nicholson. Uh, I think he looks like Steve Buscemi. I think he kind of looks like a little bit of a Johnny Knoxville too, but I can see the Steve Buscemi. So I hate this fucking guy. Is this whole show just about deplorable men enslaving uh, wrongly accused women? He's like a shell of a man, I mean. He doesn't even know the rules. The prisoner is telling him the rules. Daya is actually meeting with Pornstash's mother. Everyone believes that Pornstash raped her and she's pregnant with his baby. However, that's not the situation. She's pregnant with John Bennett's baby, the other guard. Her mother is like the worst human being on the planet. Uh, well, I don't know if Mary Steenburgen is the worst person. No, no, not Mary Steenburgen. Um, Daya's oh, mother. Daya's mother. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. she is. She is. No, Mary no, Steenburgen. Mary Steenburgen is the goddamn saint. Back to the Future 3. No, I think this is Orange is the New Daya's Mother's a Cunt. Orange is the New Daya's Mother is not really that nice of a woman. Yes, what she said. They're having this ongoing thing where the woman is trying to sell the unborn baby to Mary Steenburgens. And Daya just wants Mary Steenburgens to take the baby because she wants the baby to have a good life. And there's this whole storyline where Daya thinks if you're rich, you're gonna have a better life. And Piper reminds her, look, we both ended up here. Right. Listen, if I was that well, kid, I would I would rather have the rich life. Or, you don't want, well, you don't want to live with Carlos. Sure, but then you can get affluenza you where you go crazy because you're too rich. You're too rich. Lori Petty. Yeah, she's great. Tank girl. Tank girl. Tank, Tank girl, girl <laughs> is in the prison exactly. now. Exactly. Supposedly she's sent there to kill Alex. Or at least Alex thinks that. Well, Alex is really paranoid. Alex is very convinced that someone is going to sneak into the prison and fucking shank her. Lolly looks like a psycho, and then we find out that Lolly has been writing down every action that Alex has been doing. Yeah, really I want to go to show. women's prison. I, I, do you think Orange is the New Black is responsible for people just like, I don't give a fuck if I go to prison, I'm a woman, and I'll go to fucking OITNB. Yeah, and eat kosher be... meals. Episode nine, where am I dreidel at? Where, where, where am I dreidel at? Where am I dreidel at? Woo! A rabbi comes to the prison and he's like interviewing everyone to see if they're really Jewish or not, yep. and nobody is. This is the way the corporation figures out how to get rid of the kosher meals without having a lawsuit. This is also the episode where we get to, we learn Leanne's backstory. Uh, we know that she was a meth head and she has terrible teeth. Yeah. But we found out that she also is Amish. Amish. Which is very, it's very much breaking Amish, you know? Like she hangs out with all the other Amish kids that are like doing Molly and poppers and all this shit. And then she like sneaks through the cornfield and shows up at her parents' house. She changed her clothes in the cornfield, but left all her meth and her wallet and her ID in her backpack in a cornfield. Police found it. They do. And then she goes to prison because there's the whole bunch of meth in that bag. Yeah, it's really like the movie Go meets Amish. Breaking Amish meets, <laughs> meets Go. go. You know, without, without Katie Holmes. I don't know, it really doesn't show much for Leanne. She's not really a, much of a good person. She's not, she's not good at all. She's mean, she's nasty, and she bullies So-So in the episode. Stella gets nude. It's in the bathroom, I think, right? Stella gets nude and every lesbian oh in the world loves it. Yeah, she's she has really nice. nice little nipples. Tiny, um, microscopic. Little macro nipples. <laughs> this episode should be renamed Orange is the New Stella is Naked in the Bathroom. Or Orange is the New Nipples. I think we're on episode 10, A Titten and a Heron. I oh. love this title, by the way. Episode 10 starts off with our favorite, Pencil Tucky. We're both from Pencil Tucky. We are. We're from Pennsylvania, and Pencil Tucky is what you call the middle of Pennsylvania. This episode starts out with a 10 year old Pencil Tucky uh, realizing that she's become a woman and she got her period, and she goes to her mother <laughs> about it, and it's really. It's just horrible. No wonder she had like six abortions. This episode is really rape heavy. Rape heavy. Pensatucky was never really taught by her parents what the difference is between a good touch and a bad touch. Mm -hmm. She gets raped a lot in this episode. She definitely gets raped once. She was letting guys sleep with her for Mountain Dew. That's just a transaction. Yeah. But could you imagine just getting laid for like a six pack of Mountain Dew? <laughs> I can't imagine. <laughs> Diet Mountain Dew. Diet, Diet Mountain Red, Dew. Code Red Mountain Dew. <laughs> My girl Morello, she is visiting, she continues to have gentlemen visit her in prison. Uh -huh. One's name is Vince and he's a, a young Italian boy from Jersey. He's great because Morello has him, Morello says there's a guy harassing her and writing like really offensive things to her while she's in prison. Nevertheless, it's actually Christopher, the guy that we thought all of season one she was engaged to, but then found out in season two she's actually crazy, and 
and stalked him, so they just go over and beat the shit out of this guy. It's, it's kind so of romantic. Good. Yeah, it's romantic. That's his way of like wooing her, is like going to this guy's house that she doesn't like and beating the shit out of him. Well, yeah, the donut guy rapes Pencil Tucky. Oh. It's really sad, too, because the way she defends it, too, like, oh, he probably felt really bad after he came. And well, it's like, what? You really come to, around to like Pencil Tucky, I feel like. I like, didn't she really like her at all in the first season, no, but she now I love her, and I don't want her to get raped by Donut Guy. Yeah, with uh, her new teeth. And he used I to give hate, her donuts. It's a whole thing. I hate Donut Guy. Uh, this episode should be renamed Orange is the New Donut Guy Fucking Sucks. Mm -hmm. Orange is the new don't fuck the donut guy. But don't let him fuck you. Suzanne, this whole season is writing this like erotica, this like sci-fi erotica, and we find out that Suzanne yeah. doesn't know anything about sex. We see Suzanne go to the broom closet with, to be with this girl that offered to said, hey, we can come, you know, come hang out, we can try some things. And then Suzanne goes to open the door it. and she can't do it. I think Suzanne should win a, an Emmy. Do you win Emmys for Netflix shows? Yes, yeah, she's been nominated. Episode 11. It's called We Can Be Heroes. It's an episode about unionizing. The guards unionize. Also, Piper's employees all unionize against her, and they're like, we know how much money you got, you're making off of our soiled panties. We want a little piece. The thing with Piper here is Piper got smart. Uh, once they got the new food in the kitchen, Piper bought up all the ramen noodle flavor packets out of the commissary, and she used that to trade with girls. So I'd be like, Alaska, here is some chicken flavor. I can, I want, I can keep You this? can have this. I want your smelly, sweaty panties that I'm gonna sell. Piper actually says, do you know anyone in here for organized crime? And Red says, me. And they bond, and Red immediately becomes her like consigliere, where she starts consulting her and tells her how to do it. And then Piper, out of nowhere, comes with this whole business plan on how to pay the girls. And then she fires Flocka. Flocka was the one behind the unionization. Yeah. So Flocka was like, girls, we need to get some real money from this bitch. This whole season is about Piper not owning herself, but already owning shit, you She's know? She's being bad. She is She's being She's loving bad. to be bad. This is a really sad episode for um, Laverne Cox. Everyone starts being like, Oh, we're all of a sudden transphobic. We've had three seasons of getting our hair done by Laverne Cox, and now all of a sudden we're fucking transphobic and no one gets their hair done. It's Suzanne's manuscript is confiscated. And we know that Suzanne was basing Admiral Rodcocker after the one prison guard. The, the bald, bald guy. prison guard. And he actually finds out. <laughs> they start calling him Rodcocker. Uh, he has two dicks and he uses the dicks like a like a shocker. And so everyone starts sexualizing this guard because yeah. he's bald and they're like, oh, he is kind of hot. And then they blame the fact that Suzanne was writing this uh, sci-fi erotica. They, they blamed it on Rogers, who was the other the counselor, the other counselor who inspired sunshine. them to write, yeah, Sunshine or Bubbles or Bubbles the Kitty counselor, cat. Kitty, Kitty Cat the counselor, Kitty. and then she gets fired. Now, I hope they do the last episode of the last season and it's like 50 years in the future like they did on Weeds. I thought Weeds was great. This episode it should be called Orange is the New, Weeds is Great. <laughs> episode 12. Don't make me come back there. This episode features Daya and her bitch mother. We see that Daya is so awesome and smart and has all these great qualities. Then they go back to their house and she just immediately starts talking gangster like her mom to fit in. And it's just so sad because you just see this little girl whoosh, shatter. But the mother just really needs her daughter. She doesn't know any better. This is also the episode where Big Boo and Pencil Tucky plan their revenge on CO Coats. Pencil Tucky's really not into it, but Big Boo feels you have to get revenge on a guy who raped you, and it, it's pretty serious, but they decide they're gonna rape him with a broomstick or a mop handle, and they set it all up, and they have him bent over, and they're ready to do it, and they both just can't do it. Which, you get to see man butt in this episode. You get to see man butt, not butthole, but butt. Which, you know, I'm a big supporter of more naked men in episodes. Thank you. No, I'm serious, but like in Game of Thrones, all these chicks get naked, which I'm fine with, but then all of a sudden this guy gets the... naked and you don't show any full frontals, it's just his ass. Like, show the thing. Thank you, I've been saying this for years. Yeah, no, I agree. Maybe it's the wow in me coming up, but we need more dick on TV. I appreciate that. Hey, that's how I feel. Party. Red has a dinner party, but see, the all the black chicks took the corn, which is kind of weird. They're all eating the they corn. They were hungry. Well, they're being so rude. Red's like, you took my corn, and they're all like, no, 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 I got corn. And they're like, they're just being all 
corny. How do you just get to have dinner? Because Red alluded to the fact that she might fuck Keely, so she gets all these special privileges mm. and she can have dinner where they are drinking moonshine. Oh, they are. They're drinking moonshine straight up from the library drop ceiling. Sophia is actually a victim of a hate crime in this episode. They all gang up on her. They beat the piss out of her. They pull her hair out. It really does make no sense why all of a sudden like they've all turned on her. They don't say anything to her, then also when someone starts a rumor that she has a dick, they all start to turn on her. None of your business yeah. what she fucking has. So Katie Couric, you just need to not even ask that question, bitch. Piper and Stella actually get to have relations. And they're into episode. it, and Stella's pretty straight. She's like, I don't want to be your girlfriend. And then at the end of the episode, she's like, I'm getting out on Tuesday. I'm leaving Tuesday. <laughs> Which is like the best prison relationship you could be in. Like, all right, girl, I'm gonna break you and your girlfriend up. I'm gonna bang you. I'm gonna tell you I don't wanna be your girlfriend. Then I'm gonna leave on Tuesday. Face crack of the century. Bam. Orange is the new face crack of the century. Episode 13. I'm gonna... Rust no bitch. Now. Holding uh, my ears. You haven't seen this episode yet. Can't oh. hear anything. Okay, you can't hear anything. Good. Ears are closed. Piper gets a prison tattoo from uh, Stella because they're having a fake romance and Stella tattoos trust no bitch on her. And then suddenly Piper's like, where's all my money? And then Stella's like, oh, I had to steal your money because I'm getting out of prison and I don't have any money. So I just stole your money. So Piper's pissed. Piper frames Stella and plants all these like drugs and stuff in her um, bed. And Stella gets sent to maximum security prison. Morello ends up getting married to the Italian guy that we know from Point Park. Yay. Morello dies? Congratulations, yeah, I'm sorry. The baby that's in the house with the relatives, the house gets raided by the police and the baby gets taken into fucking child services. Caputo ends up turning on all of the guards and the guards are like, well, fuck you, we're walking out. And they leave a segment of the fence open and all the inmates start running. They start a track and field team? Uh -huh. oh. And then they get in the water and they're splashy and it's like a, a giant they party. Swim. Now really plug your oh, ears. Really? Really, really plug your ears for this I haven't seen episode 13. Because at the very last moment of the episode, they're like, we're replacing the beds. So we're all happy. Little do we know they're putting in bunk beds instead of regular beds and they're doubling the amount of inmates in the prison. The end. Ugh. Besides me not watching all 13 episodes, my fault, I think this was a very successful hashtag after show. It's been a pleasure after showing And with we're you. both wearing pink whispers panties. Whispers. Whispers. And I'll also be on a car on, on Hollywood Boulevard pushing, pedaling my uh, panties. Orange is the new pedaling my panties. <laughs> orange is the new pedaling. What do you think is going to happen in season four? Do you have any predictions? I'm not going to tell you because uh, because I know what happens and you don't. So why don't you answer that fucking question? What do you think is going to happen? Well, I hope they don't bring Larry back for starters. I'm, I'm Who's good. Larry, Jason Rapo? Biggs. Jason Biggs. Oh, yeah. yeah. Pie fucker. I think in order to take this to the next level, they need to take us to maximum security. I think they should start time traveling like on Lost. <laughs> I'd or, buy that. Or like on True Blood, they can go to like Fairyland <laughs> for a few seasons. <laughs> In season four, I'd love to see the guest stars like Martha Stewart, Henry Winkler. I can get behind Henry Winkler. I think that's a good, that's a good pick. Henry Winkler as a CO. Uh -huh. Yeah, that could be good. I actually would like to see Alaska next season. Oh, I'll totally do a. You what would guys be like? Call me. What would be your deal in prison? Who would you cling to? Like, who would be your group of girls? You think? I would really want to be friends with Red because she's Captain Janeway. I'd be like, you look just like Captain Janeway. Can we be friends? I think I'd want to be friends with um, Well Morello. I want to get to know Morello. Yeah. Want to be with Morello. I'd take Morello to that library or the supply closet. Or the supply closet. I'm not gonna puss out like Suzanne did. Rod Cocker. Rod Cocker. The Rod Cocker Chronicles. All of us here at Orange is the New Rod Cocker. I'm Steven Sims. I'm Alaska Thunderfuck 5000 from the planet Glamdron. We'll see you next time on Hashtag After Show. After Show. Don't forget to subscribe to WOW Presents.